I'd written the music for two of Steve Looker's short films about three or four years ago, and when he'd finished shooting Desperate Measures in the August of 2010, he invited me down to Manchester to view a rough cut of it, which would have been the September or the October. Myself and Steve, we talked a lot about where the music should go in the film, what, what scenes needed music, what, what scenes didn't. We talked about various styles of music that we thought would complement the film best. So we were just firing out a lot of different ideas. Once I got back up to Scotland with a rough cut of the film, I watched it another three or four times before I started coming up with a theme for Ross, Stephen Lord's character, because I knew that would be the driving force throughout the whole score, so I had to come up with that first. And the concept behind it was pretty simple. It just had to have a certain vulnerability and fragileness about it so that the audience would care for the character of Stephen Lord as the film progressed. And that was it, I just... My main inspiration behind it was just watching the film and the performances. The first time you actually hear a little bit of the theme is in the room when he's he's vomiting. That for me just felt like the right entry point because that's when I started feeling a little bit of sympathy for the character, even though he's you know a bit rough around the edges. So I, I put the theme in there, and that's from there it starts to develop into its fuller self. So this is my workstation, where I do lots of technical things. After I'd written Ross's main theme, I decided that all of the other thematic material, or most of it anyway, would be written through, through the perspective of his character, so that whatever he feels during the film, we feel. So I decided that the score was going to use a mixture of contemporary orchestral film music with some electronics as well, but I still felt that the music needed a central voice to glue it all together, which turned out to be a soprano singer and a Wedderburn. Her voice suited the film perfectly because it wasn't overly operatic. Uh, it had a real innocent and pure sound and almost like a child childlike quality in the best sense that really worked well with the story, I thought. There were about a dozen themes written in total for the film, some more prominent than others. These included a couple of tension themes which were used in scenes where there needed to be a certain level of discomfort or a certain level of danger. There was a piece of music written which became known as Ross's recovery theme which was used in some of the outdoor scenes because I felt that the landscape became part of the character's recovery so the music gives the scenes a little bit more hope and also offers a nice contrast to all of the other music in the film.
case of the scene where Ross is escorted into the room, into the dark room, and locked away, he's got a bag over his head and it's in slow motion. It reminded me of films where the guy is taken to be executed, that's what it reminded me of when I first watched it. And it for me that was the turning point in the film where I was just fully invested in the character of Ross and I really cared about what happened to him. So I wanted to amplify that moment by composing a piece of music that was just used for this moment and it's not used anywhere else, again just to amplify the scene. One of my favourite cues to write was the second attempt to escape where Ross runs up the side of a hill uh, and the sequence ends with this big wide shot of the moors and we, we just realise that he's not going anywhere and, and he knows that and the audience knows that. And it was a lot of fun to do because it's a longer sequence than the first attempt to escape so it gave me a bit of room to build up the tension and drama and add a little bit more orchestral colour and get more of the orchestra involved and when he gets to the top I used Anna to sing a little bit of Ross's theme in a higher register than previously so that it almost sounds like a voice is calling out to him from afar and and then he falls to his knees and yeah it was just it's just a nice blend of, of image and sound I remember asking Chris once I'd finished watching the film in Manchester for the very first time, I asked him what is the film about, sum up the film for me and he just said that it's about a man on the edge who's given a helping hand back and that was really, really good for me to know that because that helped me create the concepts for all of the themes and just make the music a part of the story rather than just sounding good. Mm -hmm. 